be taking a little different line. There's one word I don't use, unemployment. Uh, it's just not an economic term. They say it's great when every, a bunch of people drop out of searching for work and the unemployment rate goes down in the U.S. It's not. <laughs> they, they're giving up. Uh, so what I focus on, market hours per working age person. And we look at this across countries, and there's one group where it's low, Western Europe. Within Western Europe, Spain is just about at the bottom. They're competing with Netherlands with their huge population of disabled people, a moral hazard problem. Um, why do the Australians, Japanese, New Zealanders, Canadians, Mexicans, Americans, Canadians all work about market hours are about 40% higher than Western Europe? It isn't that the Western Europeans are lazy. Um, actually, the when they do those time studies where they beat people and ask them what they're doing, the Germans who are pretty low on market hours do a lot more homework, work in the uh, household sector. And the total amount worked is comparable. The, it used to be the case in the early 70s that actually the Europeans, Western Europeans, worked a little bit more than um, the other industrial countries. This is hours worked per working age person. You just sum up the hours and divide by the number. I always use the number of people 16 to 64 as my proxy for working age po population. It's not perfect, but pretty good. And it's good enough for uh, these purposes. You wonder why is there the difference? It shows up in uh, marginal effective tax rates dis that distort the trade-off between consumption and leisure from the ability of the economy to transform labor into uh, consumption goods. Uh, tax rates in Europe, marginal, 60%. U.S in the rest of the world, uh, 40%. A little bit lower in Mexico, but they work more uh, in the market sector. Now, so we should keep focusing on employment. We should think long run. Should there be a reform in the uh, Spanish labor market? I say yes. You want a system where you move people f from where they're less productive to where they're more productive and do it fast. Uh, this increases output. And income is equal to output. That's an accounting identity. Income is just claims against output. And there's always a residual claimant. Um, so I think some of these labor market reforms may show up in the uh, productivity numbers. I found that picture of Orly quite impressive uh, about the, uh, the youth unemployment seem to be, <laughs> goes up directly with the total uh, on, on that 45 degree line. Um, some of these lifetime tenure, maybe I should start thinking about getting rid of these huge severance pays that they have. Uh, it's not all, some European countries do have flexible labor markets. Denmark, you can move, people move fast between uh, different employers and if you want to get rid, rid of some people, if your business is doing badly and you want to reduce your employment, you let, let, lay these people off. If your business is going, you don't well, and you think you may be a great advantage, you hire lots of those people. Why? So that um, if it does go, then you hire even more. Sometimes entrepreneurs try things and they, they work. Sometimes they don't work. 
You want people get, experimenting, developing new things. The uh, entrepreneurial people do, do a lot. You need a lot of change for progress. And people like tends to want to preserve the status quo too much and impede the needed adjustments. So why is the labor market so flexible in um, Denmark and the unemployment rate relatively low there? Well, there's unemployment office is a little tougher than the uh, Spanish uh, unemployment office. You have to go down there. The size of the unemployment benefits are high. I think it's 90% replacement ratio. Um, but you go down there and you get insulted and you have to go down there every day when a place gets, and it's better to work <laughs> than to uh, be, be unemployed and they take jobs. Uh, it's more pleasant. Uh, what does the Spanish, young Spanish males whose factory gets shut down and has a, three years of severance? Well, they, many of them just take off to Finland and uh, have a good time uh, chasing attractive young ladies and, uh, and then after the three years come back. Uh, it's, it's just not an optimal system. Uh, Bob has emphasized there's one mechanism that is very good for, as a substitute for all this insurance. I didn't, when I looked at Nicolini and um, Hugo uh, Hoffenheim, or the other way around, um, I didn't see any reason why a private insurance company couldn't offer that. There wasn't anything, there wasn't any global externalities. We know how to do competitive equilibrium with some types of private information. Uh, but there is this other fascinating study is by um, Gary Hansen and Aisha Imihorlu. They said, let's compare, suppose it was costless to insure this, no moral hazard problem, and what is the welfare of the people? It's, a, it's up here. Then they said, shut that down and only permit a simple borrowing and lending arrangement in the tradition of the permanent income um, of Buley and Huggett and others. Uh, welfare is only a little bit lower. And that system is pretty cheap to run. Um, the moral hazard with insurance is pretty big. Um, and there's a lot of deadweight loss. You know, when you get your car fixed, afterwards and uh, somebody bumped into it and didn't leave a note or something, uh, you go down there and uh, to, to the repair shop and the first thing they ask you, is this insured or not? And it makes a difference in the price, if you're insured, it's the price is twice as high. Uh, but if you're not, then you, you get a much better uh, deal on this. I think these sort of simple, this sort of savings is a great system. You have means tested. U.S. does have some means tested. Medicaid is means tested. Some countries do have Social Security as means tested. New Zealand. Um, there are some cases where there's externalities and it makes sense to have mandatory insurance, particularly when you're dealing with something like a, a family. And uh, one of the parties uh, in the Mary dynamic coalition of uh, two people is a big spender. Uh, and, that, and that has consequences for how well the retirement of the other fares. So we pass laws that require dis uh, disability and survival insurance that's mandatory. And we also, countries have, have mandatory savings for retirement schemes that don't have the distortions of the labor leisure distortions. Recently, Sweden moved to that. New Ze um, Australia's had that system for a long time. 
I think it's pretty clear that we're going to be moving that way in the U.S. They cut Social Security benefits a lot. Bob said he gets a couple thousand a month. Um, that's 85% of that is taxable income. And the government gets about 35% or over a third of that. So he's really only getting two thirds as much. This was a change in the law. The, under the Greenspan Commission um, in 1983 and in further expanding of that in uh, about 1992. Um, the Greenspan Commission went up to 50% of the Social Security benefits are taxable. I get a, I don't know, like $30,000 of Social Security benefits a year, and I pay $30,000 of Social Security taxes. Um, so at least I break even uh, on this. Uh, so let's uh, reform it. You'll be more efficient, you'll be more productive. Um, I think busy people with jobs is good. Uh, I know some people who could get on this disability, but encourage them not to. Then you get dependent. It's like getting on, uh, you don't have the social interactions. You're not as, you need people to interact with. Uh, humans are social animals. Uh, that completes.